Hello everyone, I am Dr. Bhavamik Joshi from Esper MDS and in this video we are going to talk about a very important topic from the exam point of view now that is COVID-19. So in this part of video on COVID-19 we will discuss about its immunopathogenesis and some topics related to it like cytokine storm, early diagnosis and treatment of cytokine storm, D-dimer importance and some few other topics as well. So when this pandemic took place, when the outbreak took place, there are two kind of patients that were noticed. The first one whom in whom we will see severe kind of reaction and ultimately the patient will die. There will be fatal kind of result in this. And second kind of patient in which you will see mild to moderate symptoms only and ultimately they will recover. So after the research, it was found out that this fatality in certain kind of patients was related to cytokine storm. Now what is cytokine storm? For knowing what is cytokine storm, let's understand the function of cytokines. So cytokines are the kind of chemical mediators which are released from the cells and they act as chemical messengers. Now they are released from the cells in response to contact with antigen or any kind of harmful nature of substance. Now this cytokines will act as chemical messenger and they will activate the innate and the adaptive immunity right so this is what the normal function of the cytokines are but in the covid patients this cytokines will show overreaction and this overreaction of this immune system ultimately will lead to action of the immune system against the body parts itself kind of autoimmune kind of reaction so this cytokines now they'll go get accumulated in the lungs and this will lead to action of the immune system on the epithelial and the endothelial cells of the lungs and ultimately it will lead to epithelial and endothelial apoptosis. Now when there is endothelial apoptosis obviously the vessel walls will start leaking so there will be vascular leakage and the epithelial apoptosis will lead to alveolar edema. Both of this the alveolar edema and the vascular leakage ultimately will lead to the hypoxia reaction. Now this hypoxia will lead to patient's death. So this cytokine storm which leads to hypoxia is the cause for the death. So now we have seen there are two kind of patients or two kind of reactions that we see in the patients when they are infected with coronavirus. Now the coronavirus can cause two kind of reaction. One is pathogenic inflammation and second is protective inflammation or we can say our body show two kind of reactions to this coronavirus. In the persons in which there is pathogenic kind of inflammation taking place, they have chances of death. Whereas in the patients who show protective or regulative inflammation, there are chances of survival or the survival chances are high. So here what is happening is that the patient in which there is pathogenic kind of inflammation, there is very high titer of the virus after infection. So there is robust virus replication taking place. Now this high replication what it will do? It will lead to enhanced cytopathic effect on the lung cells that we have seen right and it will lead to higher productions of the pro-inflammatory cytokines. So it is already causing damage and it will also produce more cytokines from this epithelial cells which are infected. And this cytokines and chemokines in turn will again cause more infiltration of the lung cells and will lead to damage. So if we see the first point that is viral replication. So in the pathogenic kind of inflammation that is it is associated with the robust kind of viral replication. Whereas the protective kind of inflammation that is non-robust kind of virus replication. The second point is associated with the interferon response. Now remember this, in the patients who have pathogenic inflammation, in them we have already seen that there is very high titer of the virus. Now this coronavirus which is in present in very high number, they will encode multiple structural and non-structural proteins which will antagonize the interferon response. Now this interferon response is responsible for protecting our body against corona. But this corona will start encoding such structures which will antagonize the response of interferon. So this is what we are seeing that in the patients who are showing protective inflammation, they have early interferon response. This interferon will protect at very early stage. Whereas 
in the patients with the pathogenic inflammation this interferon response is delayed which is leading to more da more damage so the coronavirus will reach high titer very early after the infection they'll harbor multiple proteins and ultimately it will inhibit the interferon response so what does this suggest it suggests that early antagonism of the interferon response is delayed or it will evade the innate immune response so this is the second point we have seen the difference between the this pathogenic and protective inflammation the third point is now we have seen that multiple or very high titer of the virus are being replicated in the pathogenic inflammation and it leads to delayed interferon response so ultimately what it will lead to it will lead to accumulation of this monocytes and the macrophages as well as the neutrophil all this inflammatory cells in the lung following the infection and this cells obviously they are the predominant source of the cytokines as well as the chemokines and we have seen how does the cytokine cause the damage this cytokines will lead to damage to the lungs epithelial cells as well as microvascular cells ultimately leading to vas vascular leakage allele edema and hypoxia so all these responses that is robust viral replication delayed interferon response very high uh, infiltration by the inflammatory cells and very high release of the cytokines all of this are features of the pathogenic kind of inflammation what are the consequences of this pathogenic inflammation that took place this coronavirus specific t cells that is the t cells which are responsible for clearing of the coronavirus they limit they are supposed to limit the further damage to the host and they'll also dampen the overreactive or kind of autoimmune innate immune response which is taking place but this this exuberant inflammatory response which is taken place by the pathogenic coronavirus it will diminish the t cell response in this patients so the vascular leakage and all those things which we have seen already is taking place only the damage and apoptosis is taking place as well as the virus clearance which was supposed to take place by t cell is also neutralized also there is suboptimal t cell and antibody response so all of them will ultimately lead to the acute lung injury that is we have seen what kind of damage to the edema and the uh, vascular damage was there that we have seen this lung injury will lead to ARDS that is acute respiratory distress syndrome and ultimately it will lead to death in this corona patients whereas in the patients who have protective kind of inflammation they'll show minimal epithelial endothelial damage which will lead to reduced vascular leakage and there will be optimal T cell antibody responses which will ultimately lead to generation of protective immunity and it will lead to survival of the host so this is how the cytokine storm is causing damage in the lungs ultimately leading to death now the question arises that can we know in the advance that cytokine storm is going to take place of course we can know based on certain tests clinical examination as well as blood test so in the blood test we can find out presence of raised levels of the il6 as well as raised level of the ferritin ldh and crp all this four they are raised in the patients of coronavirus and when they are raised to a higher level we can suspect that the cytokine storm may be coming also the features such as relapse of fever breathlessness and oxygen saturation less than 95 all of this are the features which are suggestive of the cytokine storm then also the question is about by what time does this cytokine storm will take place or when can we expect the patient to be under cytokine storm so that we can manage the patient accordingly so usually the patient's immune system gets activated by the first week to 10 day after infection so the likelihood of the onset of the cytokine storm is usually 7 to 10 days of the active infection so that is the time duration during which the patient needs to be given maximum attention one thing in between the cytokine storm we'll see is about diagnosis of COVID-19. Now, most of the tests being carried out are RT-PCR only, reverse transcript test, polymerase chain reaction, which is the test in which we are finding out presence of corona in the patient. But this test 
it takes 30 to 40 percent of the false negative result also it takes lots of time so in this time that it is taking of almost one to one and a half day there are higher chances that the prognosis might become even poor by the time the person is waiting for the result of the test instead if hrct that is <coughs> high resonance ct scan if they are used they'll provide faster and if the radiologist is having good experience it gives highly specific results in many cases that have been reported that hrct say it is it is proving as life saving even in the condition which were diagnosed of course false negatively by the rt pcr as negative but the patient was having pneumonia symptoms and they were diagnosed with the help of this high resonance ct scan and the treatment was done okay Next, we'll see about the treatment of the cytokine storm. Remember, we are not talking about treatment of corona per se or in, in general. We are talking about the treatment of the cytokine storm. So, the drug of choice or the life-saving drug in the severe cytokine storm are steroids in which you can give oral, IM or IV depending on the patient's condition and severity, you can give dexamethasone. The other option is methylprednisolone which can be given. Now, the steroids can be administered in, if the patient is having uh, respiratory distress, it can be administered in the form of inhalation also, depending on the signs and symptoms. Next, we'll see about D-dimer. Now, this D-dimer, actually what happens is, in the corona patients, there is activation of the coagulation casket. So that leads, that means there is production of blood clots taking place in the body. And of course, our body will try to degrade them. So, these blood clots which are forming on fibrinolysis, there will be this FDPs which will get accumulated in the body. This FDPs are fibrin degradation products. Okay. One of them is D-dimer. Now, the value of D-dimer is always raised in corona patients. So, and when, uh, when it is raised, it shows that the patient is having activation of the coagulation casket taking place. And this D-dimer level it correlates with the disease severity. The severe the disease, higher the level of D-dimer. So, they are rela reliable prognostic marker in the in-hospital mortality. Right? So, if D-dimer is elevated, it will signify the activation of the coagulation cascade and in this case, patient has to be treated with, remember this can be asked you in exam. So, for this, the treatment is low molecular weight heparin. It is the drug of choice, for example, anoxyparin. Right? So, this is important and one small point that we have to remember is about coronavirus, the human coronavirus. There are two types of uh, coronavirus depending on the pathogenicity, the low pathogenic and high pathogenic. Low pathogenic coronavirus, they usually stay in the upper respiratory tract and they lead to mild cold-like symptoms or flu-like symptoms. Whereas the high pathogenic human coronavirus, which are causing SARS or MERS, that is severe acute respiratory syndrome, or Middle East Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus, they usually get uh, habitated in the lower airway and they prove fatal because of their pathogenicity. Okay, so that's all from this video on the coronavirus. This is first part. We'll soon be releasing the second part also. Do share about SPRMDS with your friends. All the best.